Hi guys, it's David here from One Step at a Time and today, as you can see, I'm going to be showing you how to install Ubuntu and it's 14.04. I'm putting in the long-term support version. I'm not putting in the 14.10. Uh, it still won't matter. Uh, it's the same process for either anyway. So I did install Linux 17.1 Mint uh, a couple of days ago and I showed you how to do that in the USB and how to put it onto an external hard drive and partition it. This is the exact same process. What I said I do in this video, it might be a bit longer, but I would show you how to do everything. So I'm going to show you how to put it onto a bootable USB and then how to install it. I'm just going to be using a 16 gigabyte USB to install it on. Um, but if you're using a 500 gigabyte external hard drive, it's fine either way. Uh, when we get to the partitioning, just allow at least 10 gigabytes for the root but as I won't have that much space on this I'll be using a little bit less but we can talk about that later and um, you just have to come here to ubuntu.com and just click on go to download and go to desktop but on this um, just pick your version either 32 or 64 bit it's 64 bit so and just click the download I have it downloaded because uh, my broadband is not the best so it would take a long time to download and we don't want to be waiting for it so I have it on my desktop this is it here and the first thing we're going to do is I want to show you as well a little application that you can download it's called Rufus and you just go to this Rufus .ie and just come on down here and download this and then we're going to create our bootable USB with this so I'm just going to close that close this down I'll cancel I'll just minimize it come on minimize right so the first thing you want to do is just open Rufus But anyway, up here, as you can see, uh, the device that I'm using, I'm just going to wipe it. I've got a Hirons bootable CD put onto this, which is a fantastic piece of software anyway for saving your ass if you have lost or deleted or your computer has crashed. So. But anyway, I have it already on another one. Uh, I've done this for the video. so um, It'll automatically detect your USB if you're plugged in. So, as I said, it's picked up this. I want the file system FAT32, so I'm leaving it at FAT32. I'm going to leave the cluster size at default. And the label, I'm just going to call it Ubuntu. And then down here, I'm going to click on the downward, and I'm going to click ISO image. And then I'm going to click... Um, to select the image so once I've selected the image I'm going to go to my desktop which is here and this is my ISO file so I'm going to click on that and then say open and once it's in there all you have to do then is click start so I'm going to click start and it's just telling me warning all that on this will be deleted which is fine Now this is going to take a little while, so what I'll do is I'll pause the video and I will come back to you in a few seconds. Okay, if guys, we're finished creating our Ubuntu bootable USB. It takes about five, ten minutes. But um, we're going to restart the computer now. I'm going to use my little handheld to show you this section of it. But don't plug in the external device you're going to be using, the hard drive, until you've booted up through your USB because um, it can get a little bit confused when the two of them are plugged in so wait until you've booted up first then plug in the external hard drive that you want to use to install Ubuntu onto so I'm just going to close this down um, once I get my uh, options up here 
and see I think be able. Um, you have a couple of different options on depending on your system but on mine the F9 is giving me a once off option so I'm going to use that like F9 and then just use your arrow keys scroll down to USB and click enter and as you can see guys we're in at the welcome screen here and it gives you the option to try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu so what we're going to do is we're going to say try Ubuntu and you can choose your language here along the left hand side and then we're going to try Ubuntu So what you want to do then is once this screen opens, you've just come here to where it says install Ubuntu and click on that. I'm just going to plug in my external hard drive that I'm going to use for the installation. So I'm going to close that down. What I'm going to do is choose my language, just hit continue. And I'm not going to connect to the network at the moment because uh, it can slow up, I just want to install it. I can do that later anyway near the end. Just click continue. And I'm just going to click continue. And then this option here is the computer currently has multiple operating system on it. What would you like to do? And we're going to come down here to something else because we don't want to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. So I'm going to say something else. Click continue. As I said, this is nearly the exact same as installing the Linux Mint. Once you get to this screen, it's going to show you all your internal drives and any external drive that you have. Your external hard drive. And if you haven't partitioned it or mounted uh, any partitions or formatted it, you'll just get this free space. So what we're going to do is allocate some free space to a couple of partitions. So what you do is click on free space, click on the plus sign. And the first one we're going to put in is 300 and this is going to have to be a primary because we're going to put the bootloader in here and it has to be in a primary it won't boot from a logical so we're just going to say at the beginning of the space we're going to leave it as it uses extension 4 and we're going to come down here and click on boot just say ok make sure you've highlighted free space you don't want to put this on your internal hard drive so as you can see it's put it in here so we scroll down and we click on free space again click on the plus sign and in this one we're just going to leave it as a logical but we're going to create a root so what I'm going to do is like I said at the beginning of the video if you're using a 500 gigabyte external hard drive to install this to allow more for the root so seven will do And this is going to be logical, and I'm going to use this as root. And I'm going to click OK. I'm going to scroll down again, and then I'm going to click on free space, click on my plus sign, and I'm going to leave this as logical as well. But what I'm going to do is this time I want to use it as a swap area. so I'll click on swap area swap area is like your RAM all you want to do is allocate whatever size you want to that so uh, 4000 I usually put into it of a bigger hard drive but for the purpose of the video and what I'm using I'm just going to say 2000 to allow for that so, so 2000 megabytes I'm going to click ok we've done the swap we allowed 2000 for that and the last free space then we're going to allow for the home folder so you just click on it click on the plus sign we can leave this as logical as well i'm going to put it at the end of the space even though it's going to be at the end anyway and we're going to choose our home here and then just click ok and come back down here but as you can see guys this is the this is a very important place device for bootloader installation don't want to click this this is your internal hard drive
on your machine so make sure you click the download arrow here and scroll down to the one that's matching your SDC one or whichever it is on yours the one you've um, used for the boot so come down to the boot so you can see it's SDC one so click on that and once you're happy with that just click install now and then when you you want to pick your area so I'm in Ireland so I'm going to pick that let's come up to Dublin and I'm going to say continue and once you get this option all you have to do then is just once you pick your language just click on continue and then just type in name you want to use so sorry about my hands cross And then it's giving me, and I'm going to choose a password. And I'm going to confirm it. And for this, I'm just going to say log in automatically. So, and I'm going to just click continue. So guys, it's copying files and installing it. So um, you can look through this, and it gives you and shows you a few features of it, which are pretty cool. But um, this can take a while. So what I'll do is I'm going to pause the video, and when it's fully installed, I'll come back. Okay, guys, this is the last step I'm going to show you, and it is how to dual boot either into your windows or into your Ubuntu. I'm going to be using this little application here called EasyBCD 2.2. I'm going to put a link in the description anyway so you can download it. Once you've downloaded it you just double click and then in here you'll you'll end up at the beginning here on the view settings tab and what you want to do is come down here and click on add new entry across click Linux PST click on the type and go down to grub2 and the name I'm just going to call it Ubuntu and then for the drive you want to come down here and uh, if you remember we had created this 300 megabyte partition and it's picking it up here automatically so I'm just going to click to choose this make sure you don't choose any of your internal so picking it and you just click add entry and then it'll tell you down here it's added successfully and once it has just come up here to the edit boot menu and click on that and in here you have a couple of options uh, you can choose if you click in here it'll turn that from yes to no and it will boot into Ubuntu before Windows 7 or if you want to leave it just click and make sure that the top one's highlighted you also have the option down here for the countdown now I've changed it to 10 seconds it's normally 30 and this will count down and it'll give you the option to choose either of them to boot into first this just saves you going through your BIOS the whole time and then there's a wait for user selection if you click that and click save settings it won't boot into either of them it'll only uh, only once you've chosen chosen which one it is so and once you're happy with that just click save settings and that's it guys next time you restart your computer you should have um, the option to boot into either so i hope you liked the video and sorry about the crappy little bit in the middle uh, it's just the way it worked out with my screen recorder so i hope you could see it if you liked the video hit the like button subscribe if you want and i will see you in the next one cheers good luck